folks, welcome back to the Frontier Western Heritage Channel. I'm Todd Kessner here at the gun range outside of Bozeman, Montana. And uh, we finally have got ourselves above zero and actually about 30 degrees here toward the end of February. And we're happy to be able to be back out on the range. It is not warm, but it certainly is a whole lot better than what we've had over the last several weeks and uh, enough to get us out here anyway and give it a try. There is a little bit of a cold wind blowing, so if you see the, the tears coming out of my eyes, that's a, that's a real cold wind that's kind of washing across us, but we're going to give this a try anyway, and we're going to do something a little bit different here that we haven't done before, and that is we're going to work on some different loads for a model 1894 Winchester in 3855. And we're going to work on some smokeless loads for a Texas pig hunt that's coming up in a couple of weeks. And so we want to give this, uh, give these loads a try, see what groups best. And then if we need to do some sight adjustment, we'll need to, to load up the best round and, and do some sight adjustment after that. But that's the plan today. And what, what I've got right now is my cameraman's model 1894 Winchester. This is the Crazy Horse commemorative and these came out in 1983 and uh, about 20,000 of them uh, were produced and put out on the market and it's a very beautiful gun and I can get up here and show you just a little bit more of it if you can pick that out on the camera. It's got an uh, engraving crazy, crazy horse's image on the side uh, and it also has engraving on the other side of the receiver as well in the saddle ring and uh, buffalo hunting scene and it says crazy horse commemorative down down the barrel and just a neat thing ornate with the tax uh, and a symbol on the stock it's a really neat gun it's got a 24 inch barrel and uh, made very much like the original 1894s and without the the tang safety and all the things that a lot of us it just irritates us that it is not historically correct and just annoys us a little bit that they kind of ruin some of these old guns with all this extra safety stuff when when they were perfectly safe to to start with so if you're thinking why in the world are you taking the crazy horse commemorative out on a hunt when it's got all this fancy engraving it's a beautiful rifle it should go in the safe it should hang on the wall someplace really pretty well Honestly, to get into a 3855, this is really the least expensive way to go. They made enough of these commemoratives, and there's one for the Frontiersman and some others. They made enough of these, Oliver Fisher Winchester is another one, they made enough of these in, in 3855 that uh, they're really not as collectible as people thought they were going to be, and they are the least expensive way of getting into a 3855. Uh, this caliber is just something I really like, and so I recommended it to my son, and we got this for him for, for his graduation last year. So um, just, you know, we're going to take care of it, but at the same time, we're going to use it. I don't have a lot of guns that I just put away someplace and, and never look, look at again. So when this gun came out, 1894, this model, it came out in a 2535, and it also came out in 3855. And so people say, well, it was the Model 94 that introduced the 3030. It was the first gun to take uh, smokeless rounds, and the 3030 was the first cartridge to take the smokeless rounds. And, and in reality, this came out with the 2535 in black powder, 1894. Came out with the 30, 38, excuse me, 3855 in black powder as well. And one year later, in 1895, was when Winchester changed over to the steel that would hold, handle the smokeless loads and came out with a smokeless 3030. And so one problem with the 3855 is that it's built sometimes very, with the modern ammo is low pressure, not what, what the new guns, uh, the new guns wouldn't require the low pressure, the old ones would. And uh, we can hop this up just a little bit, stay within a perfectly safe zone, get a little more velocity and energy out of it, and, and be able to be perfectly safe in a modern steel gun. So, 3855 made that transition from black powder to smokeless. It was a weak cartridge in smokeless because of the old guns. We can make it a stronger cartridge, and that's what we're going to try today. So, let's take a few shots downrange. We've got uh, four different loads to test and see what we can do with this 3855 and get ready for that Texas pig hunt. So what we've got here in the 3855, I've got a, a cast performance bullet that is 260 grain lead with a gas check uh, on the bottom of it and it's, it's coated in a, in a lubricant that cast performance puts on. So we're going to try several, several loads of 31, or excuse me, 3031 IMR, 3031 smokeless, see if we can get this thing to 
to group for us and kind of go kind of go from there. Yeah, you know, um, a minute ago I mentioned that uh, this rifle has the likeness of Crazy Horse on the side, and uh, any of you folks who are well versed in Western history may realize that a likeness of Crazy Horse is completely somebody's imagination because there is no recorded actual picture, a photograph, or any kind of likeness out there that we know of, of, uh, of cra Crazy Horse. Several people seem to have come up with a, with a few and the claim that it's Crazy Horse, but that's never been substantiated. So whatever image is on the side of this particular rifle is somebody's imagination of what Crazy Horse would have looked like. But let's get to the shooting and see if we can't get these things to group. That's it. All right, let's go see what this thing is. Well, it looks like uh, first big noticeable thing here is that we are way high. We've got way higher than the factory loads that we've been shooting. So we've got one clear up here, and then two, three, four, five. So uh, these, even with the lowest one, this is 28 grains of 3031. We are throwing this thing. A lot higher than the than the factory loads would do. We had that that ramp site way up high because our factory loads were shooting somewhere down below, but they just didn't they just didn't group that great. So we wanted to play around with it, see if we can't get a little more velocity out of this thing safely and and tighten the groups up. So you look at this, we're shooting except for that first one, and yeah, not half bad of a of a uh, of a group, but I think we can do better than that. I think we'll we'll try lowering this site down here, Sam, and see if we can get you down in the paper. So I don't know if some of this was you shivering or if it's, uh, I know if the gun's high, I mean, they're consistently high. I don't know if the group would be tighter if you weren't shivering. We'll, uh, we'll see what that next, that next load does. All right, so with your factory loads, we had this thing set as high as it would go just to get on paper at 100 yards. So I'm gonna move this down, I'm gonna go three of them. And, uh, cause you've got one more grain, this is the, 29 grains of 3031 so yeah, this is going to be a little hotter than the last one by one grain and you know, we'll see if three notches was enough Well, four, four rounds again. I mean, it's not like going to win any long range rifle contest, but, uh, but not a bad group. We got the, the one that went way up here and then we got four right in here, but we're still way up at the top of this target. So you said you're shooting, you're aiming right down below the bottom of the, putting your, what, that front bead right on the bottom of the black circle? Yeah. Yeah, and so we're good. Even if our lowest one were foot high, so we don't need to have anywhere near the the elevation on that ramp. I dropped it three, and it didn't really do anything, uh, not much anyway. And uh, so we'll drop it some more as long as you're holding that that bead in the same place every time. You've been consistent with that. Yeah. Okay. So it's right on top of that white diamond on the rear sight. Let's drop the sight some more. Uh, you know, if, if eliminating this one way up here, if we get this group here uh, at 100 yards open sights, that's not all bad, and uh, definitely would be within the within the vital zone of a mule deer or elk or a or a wild boar. So we'll keep trying and let's try one or two more two more uh, uh, different loads here. See what we get. Yeah, that's as low as it as low as it goes. So let's give that a try.
right, so here we are. This is the 30 grains of IMR 3031. The, the brass still looks good. The rifle looks good. And we dropped those sights as far down as they'll go. That, that rear sight, instead of being up on the ramp, is basically down on the barrel. And, uh, and we're getting a, I don't know, Sam, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, look at these. Those three right there is a dead pig, no matter how you look at it. I don't know what you did here. You got one clear down at the bottom. I think uh, a couple things are going on. I mean, it's it's not 25 below, but it's it's cold. You're shaking. I'm starting to shake. It got cold enough I couldn't get my ear plug in. So I don't know if my ear shriveled up or my plug. What's going on? But I can't really get my ear plug in. It's cold enough. I can't get that rubber plug in. So uh, it's not exactly pleasant, but it's the best weather we've had in a long time. We wanted to take advantage of it. So shoot, I you know if we could eliminate that guy. And if we were real generous and eliminate that guy, you got yourself about a two inch group going here 100 yards in open sight. So uh, everything but this one that you dropped looks like it's gonna, it's gonna work. And the group looks better than the previous group. So I think this higher velocity is it's still, still throwing this bullet in a stable manner and it's getting a little better. So let's try that last one at 31. That's as high as I felt comfortable going, even though the I think the uh, maximum is 32.5, but I'm gonna, we'll try that at 31 and uh, pick our favorite, which so far to me, it's just 30 grains of 30, 31 right now. So let's go shoot those last five, see what we get. You are climbing up again considerably with that last load and your group has opened up a ton. So even the, even the three that are the closest together aren't that great when you compare it to the last target. So yeah, it's hard to have confidence in this, in this test today because we've got a little bit of a breeze and you're shivering. So, uh, but I got to look at, at performance. This one's going too high. Your group, there's your top two, three right here. Your group is opened up. If I go back, ugh, let me back up a little bit. Again, you dropped that one, but here you had three in the black, one just above. So I'm gonna vote for 30 grains of IMR 3031, uh, knowing that you are hitting the middle of the target. You've got a really good group on those three. You really add that fourth one in, you got a good group. You didn't come close with that one. So again, I'm not 100% sure you were hurrying a little bit because I think you wanted to get it over with because you're freezing. Hands are cold. But at the same time, it opened up and your, others, your other ones did not open up. So I think I'm going to 3031. So folks, uh, if you like the video, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And uh, we'll get this, get this kind of stuff out to, out to more people. And, and the more people get interested in, in historical firearms and the shooting sports, the better for all of us. So again, for, for this time, just want to thank you for coming. And we're rolling? Yes. All right. Well, folks, welcome back to the Frontier Western Heritage Channel. I almost forgot what it was. <clears throat> it's a channel. It's the Frontier Western Heritage one. Yeah. The uh, model 1984. And, no, 1984. <laughs> 1894. Do I get to be mic'd up? If you want to be. For my 15 seconds of fame? Yeah. Does it look like I'm shaking all over the place? Oh, I feel like I'm shaking all over the place. Are you? Oh, well, we got quick the group. It's just a... Uh, 16 inches high. Let's go. Uh, whoa, there's a ricochet. Let's go uh, take a look at this and geez, there's another one. I cannot get these things in my ear now that they've gotten cold.
In the intro, you should put up a picture of my mule deer with my rifle on it so that they know I can hit something with this.